This is VLX1, and you'll understand what that means in just a minute. Hi, my name is Father David Nix, and I'm a diocesan hermit from the Archdiocese of Denver. You may have seen some of my writing or my podcasts already at Padre Peregrino or pilgrimpriest.org, and maybe some talks here at Census Fidelium. Let's begin with an Our Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm very excited to announce that for three times a week, on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, for just about ten minutes a day, I'll be teaching Catholic Meditation. I'm calling this series Video Lexio Divina, or Vidlex, or VLX. Now, Lexio Divina means divine reading, and it's pretty much how the saints described how we Christians should actually approach the sacred scriptures. Vidlex, or VLX, is my video teaching on how to meditate just like the saints did, essentially to come to know Christ through meditation, nothing short of that. My other series on this channel will be to know Christ through the Catechism, That will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on that, I'll be teaching 10 minutes a day also on the Catechism of Pope St. Pius X. That will also be about 10 minutes a day. I'm calling that one CPX for Catechism of Pope St. Pius X. So back to VLX. The goal of this entire series is to teach the two different ways of Catholic meditation as done by the saints. Let me say right now that this video is VLX1 telling you how important prayer is. VLX1 here will be about 20 minutes long. VLX2 will be slightly longer, but quite a bit more important because I'm going to actually be teaching you how to pray on that one, which can be applied to hundreds of the future VLX videos that I hope to put out, all about 10 minutes long as we go very slowly through the Gospels, teaching you how to meditate on them. And I'm going to ask you, after each 10-minute video, to go pray for 15 minutes. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. So here's the good news. What I will do is I'll teach you 10 to, minute, 10 to 15 minutes of kind of like the training wheels in the hopes that you bring this Bible study to about 15 minutes of your own prayer. First, we will go slowly through the Gospel of St. Matthew, teaching you how to meditate on each chapter, taking only about a quarter a chapter a day. That's really important because otherwise it's just reading it. We'll go through Matthew, Mark, Luke and John over the next few years. That sounds tedious, but here's the thing. We're only doing a quarter of a chapter of the gospel every day, meaning that when you bring this to prayer, the gospels, at least if if this goal of mine works, will really come alive for you. Because if you tackle anything more than a quarter of a chapter of the gospel, it's reading, like I said, not meditation. Now, in Catholicism, meditation and mental prayer are used interchangeably. Meditation is mental prayer in Catholicism. But question for you, How many of your New Age friends look forward to their time in centering prayer or what they may call meditation? Now, that's not what we're going to be doing, but have you ever seen pictures of people smiling, sitting Indian style on the beach, acting like they're in total bliss? Think about how many California-based motivational speakers like Tony Robbins drink their green veggie drink at 5 in the morning and then go for an hour of meditation near their pool at 5.30, 6 a.m. Tony Robbins makes it look really good and natural and peaceful, and fun. But if you ask a Catholic to meditate on the Bible 15 minutes a day, it feels like just one more thing for the devotional checklist. The great news of this series is, I'm going to make it not a task. You're going to love it. Now, I like to normally under-promise and over-deliver, so I'm hesitant to say this, but this series, if I succeed, or rather if God succeeds in using a broken instrument like me, this series is going to make you love meditation. Now, what I hope you get from this series, VLX, is not information, but the tools to meditate as the saints approach the Bible. Because, you know, where Tony Robbins, who I just mentioned, got his big pool, might have this natural set of peace, only Christ can give you supernatural peace. And if you learn this way of mental prayer from the saints, you will jump out of bed and want to do it every day. Now, I have to say, you won't be learning about the saints in this series. You'll be learning about Christ himself in the gospel. It's just that we'll be using the method of the saints in our approach to the sacred scriptures, which, by the way, is actually pretty easy to do. 
If you commit to 15 minutes a day after my 10 to 15 minutes a day of teaching and meditation on this quarter of the chapter of the gospel, you will not see meditation as a burden, but as a portal to your source of life, who is Christ itself. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. In Catholicism, there are three types of prayer, liturgical, vocal, and mental prayer. And within these three, we find adoration, repentance, supplication, and thanksgiving. But let's look at that first subset. Liturgical prayer is the Mass and Divine Office and other paraliturgical paraliturgical things like benediction. Vocal prayer includes things like novenas and praying the rosary out loud. All of these are great things. But mental prayer, even though it sounds like an intellectual exercise, is not just a matter of the brain, but primarily of the heart. St. Teresa of Avila said this, quote, mental prayer is nothing else than an intimate friendship, a frequent heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him by whom we know ourselves to be loved, end quote. Again, I'll use mental prayer and meditation interchangeably. St. Alphonsus Liguori said this, quote, a quarter of an hour's prayer is sufficient to appease every passion of hatred or of inordinate love, however ardent it may be. He brought me into the cellar of wine. He set an order of charity in me. Holy meditation is the cellar where love is set in order, so that we may love our neighbor as ourselves and God above everything. He who loves God loves prayer, and he that loves not prayer will find it morally impossible to overcome his passions. Close quote. St. Alphonsus Liguori is specifically talking about silent time. He's not talking about liturgical time, as important as that is. That's actually the pinnacle of all prayer. He's not talking about the rosary, which I think is essentially necessary for salvation, especially nowadays. But what you're going to find is mental prayer feeds both of those. Meditation is going to make your Mass subjectively come alive. Of course, it's already objectively the infinite sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Mental prayer is going to make your rosaries come alive. And this is where I believe mental prayer is the number one thing that's missing in the lives of those Catholics out there. So where most of you probably have rich lives of vocal prayer, most of you have poor lives of mental prayer. But here's why it's so important for every Catholic to have mental prayer in their life. St. Teresa of Avila said, Take my advice and let no one mislead you by pointing out any other way than prayer. I am not discussing here whether mental prayer and vocal prayer are necessary for everybody, but I contend that you require both. Did you hear that? She said, you require both. Meditation isn't just something for priests and nuns. This is something that, well, at least according to St. Teresa of Avila and St. Alphonsus Liguori, is actually necessary for salvation. Because here's why. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I don't want you to see mental prayer as just a way to grow in virtue. When Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, you have to start to see the series as this. This series is to come to know Christ, who can rarely be not loved if he's actually known. In other words, to know Christ is to love him. And what I'm going to teach you, it's not going to be my teaching actually, I'm going to relay to you the way the saints meditated on the Bible. To know Christ is to love him. And that is why you should persevere in this series because, and I realize this is a tall order, you will come to know Christ personally on this series. In fact, St. Teresa of Avila went so far as to say, the devil knows that he has lost the soul that perseveringly practices mental prayer. Now, saints don't usually talk in absolutes like that of our salvation because they know we can lose it. So I'm going to read that again because it should be pretty striking. St. Teresa of Avila said, The devil knows that he has lost the soul that perseveringly pr practices mental prayer. Before we wrap up, let me bring you back to that other quote from St. Teresa again. Quote, Mental prayer is nothing else than an intimate friendship, a frequent heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him by whom we know ourselves to be loved. So you should hear in that that you lay people can enter into friendship and conversation daily with Jesus Christ. In fact, an intimate friendship, a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. A heart-to-heart -heart intimate conversation and friendship with Jesus is not Protestantism. Notice that I just took all those words from a 16th century saint. A heart-to-heart -heart intimate conversation and friendship with our Lord Jesus. The goal of this entire series is to teach you two different ways of Catholic meditation the way of St. Bruno, and the way of St. Teresa of Avila, which is also the same way as St. Ignatius of Loyola. So St. Bruno and St. Teresa of Avila. 
Both bring overwhelming joy and peace in the ways of mental prayer. Both ways are awesome, and I'm going to be teaching you both ways on VLX2. The first is called the apophatic way, which I know sounds like a big word, but it's just the way of St. Bruno. And what this means is it's just chewing on a few words of the gospel for 15 minutes to an hour a day. This means honing in on just a few words after honing in on just a quarter of the gospel. When you, when you finally focus in on these few words, it's sort of like a cow chewing a cud that you really can meditate on all day, but you're not using your imagination. It's, it's using, your, you're using your brain um, without images in your, in your brain. And so St. Bruno's method is called Lexio Divina, divine reading. Okay, that's the first way. The second way, and it's, not, it's neither better nor worse. It's just you have to figure out how your brain is wired. I'm going to help you determine if your brain kind of works in the way of St. Bruno or works in the way of St. Teresa of Avila. St. Teresa of Avila, that's the way of using your imagination. We call it the cataphatic way. You don't have to remember the term apophatic and cataphatic. Cataphatic just means that you're going to use your imagination. Now, imagination, that might sound very childlike uh, because it is. You picture yourself, say, as one of the apostles interacting with Jesus with all of first century Palestine life around you. And this is, again, this might sound childlike, but this is how St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Ignatius of Loyola taught his men this way. He would say, imagine yourself right there with Jesus at the crucifixion. You come up to his feet, all of the skin whipped off of it, and you kiss that nail right there at the crucifixion. What is that like? Or maybe you're at the resurrection with, with our Lord. Or maybe you take the place of Peter and you're stepping out of the boat as you look into the eyes of our divine Savior. What do his eyes look like as you reach out your hand and he grabs your hand? Again, I know some of you think this sounds Protestant, but this is the way that St. Ignatius of Loyola not only taught priests, but at least by the end of the 16th century, I think close to 100,000 laymen who had done the spiritual exercises. So what I'm trying to do is bring you Ignatius of Loyola's spiritual exercises on video. Let's consider another one with the imagination. Imagine the visitation. Imagine that you are just this little like slave boy or slave girl and you're holding the rope to the donkey with Mary on the back and you're going up to the hill of Judea, Ein Karim. Imagine you hold that rope and you get there to Elizabeth's house and Mary's on the back of this donkey. You tie that rope to a tree. As you walk up to, say, Elizabeth's house, what does the bread smell like that she is actually making there? What is it like when Mary so quietly knocks on the door and Elizabeth, maybe a little bit louder, says, Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And while Elizabeth lets you in, maybe you go to the backyard and sit down and you look into Mary's eyes and you tell her your hopes and your dreams and how much you love her. What does she say back to you? And if you think this sounds emotional, well, it is. And it's how the saints taught prayer. Now again, some of your brains will want the apophatic way of no imagination, the way of mental prayer of St. Bruno. That is totally fine. Some of your brains will latch on to the highly imaginative way of using your imagination of all five senses. What does that hollow bread of St. Elizabeth smell like as she's cooking? What does the rope feel like as you tie that donkey to a tree? What does the grass feel like as you're sitting in the back looking into the eyes of the Immaculate Conception, telling her about your life? If you're generous in the imagination setup, God will be generous in the spiritual side. So we're going to go through St. Saint, Saint Matthew's Gospel. First, looking at the Lexio Divina. Uh, I learned Greek in seminary, so we're actually going to look a lot at the Greek. And then we're going to look at the imaginative. I'll give you some suggestions for imaginative way of prayer. And then after those 10 minutes a day, I'm going to ask you to just go and pray. Now, if you don't do the 10 minutes of prayer, I'm never going to know. And then you can probably make a decent Bible study out of this, but I think you'll get a thousand times more out of this if you don't just approach it as an informational Bible study, but as actually a launching pad to one of those two forms of prayer, apophatic or cataphatic, as we approach St. Matthew's Gospel. And then we'll do the Gospel of St. Mark, probably in 2021, if Christ hasn't returned by, by then, then St. Luke's the next year, then St. John. So let me make this channel clear again. Every Sunday... And Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to give you several minutes of the non-imaginative way of prayer, mostly pointing out really cool connections in the Greek. And then, in the second half of this 10 minutes, I'll give you more vivid suggestions, still on that little section of one quarter of St. Matthew's Gospel, 
on using your imagination, if you like, the more lively way of placing yourself in the Gospels with St. Teresa of Avila and St. Ignatius of Loyola. St. John Vianney said, flies don't land on boiling water. And I've done a lot of writing and blogging and podcasting and everything on church reform, but ultimately none of that really matters. We can actually recognize problems in the church, but unless you're getting to heaven, what good is it to point out parts of church reform? And this is why I'm starting this, because think of that line again from St. John Vianney, flies don't land on boiling water. If your heart and your brain get lit on fire with love of Christ, which really just means knowing him, then it's going to keep sin away. It's really that simple. This is what many, many saints say. There's an exorcist I know who says, he basically says the number one preventative way against needing an exorcism is meditation because demons don't come near the brain that is full of Christ. They don't come near the heart that is full of Christ. And so this isn't just a sweet devotional thing. One, I think you're going to love it. And two, I think it's going to actually be necessary for salvation as we enter these crazy days of 2020 and the whole next decade. If you do this faithfully, you'll start to love Catholic meditation and it will not be a burden. Let's entrust this whole thing to St. Joseph since he is guardian of both the interior life and the church. So that applies perfectly to meditation and catechesis, the two sections on this channel that I'll be doing. Again, please entrust all of this, and especially me, to St. Joseph, maybe saying a prayer every day for me. Let me close with some practical things here. As I said, this is VLX1. VLX2 is probably going to be the most important of all my videos because you'll learn the way of meditation of the saints. And that's coming out probably this week, at least this month. And we'll have VLX3, which is actually the genealogy of Jesus. Very hard to meditate on, so we're actually just going to look at what the church fathers say about that. It will not be our first meditation one, but it is going to have a lot of awesome stuff on the life of St. Joseph. So I would encourage you to tune in before VLX4. VLX4 will be your first training wheels, so to speak. VLX4 will be your first training wheels as we look at the second half of Matthew chapter 1, which is the birth of Jesus. That will be our Catholic meditation and topic for the first one. Again, this will only be about 10 minutes a day, but it will be on the birth of Jesus, or I should say a first one will be on the birth of Jesus, and it will only be about 10 minutes. For those of you who like St. Bruno, we'll look at some cool words in the Greek. And for those of you who like to picture yourself in that dark cave, we'll go deeper into that cave so you can be completely with Jesus Mary. Maybe I remember the first time I did this when Mary handed me her son Jesus to hold. And I was just crying because I didn't expect that to happen. Again, this is going to sound corny, but this way of prayer is going to um, make mystics out of even... The slobs out there, slobs like me. Okay, and last thing, please subscribe. Search Padre Peregrino on YouTube or on your podcast app. I prefer Apple Podcasts, but if you have an Android, you can get the free app called CastBox and then search Padre Peregrino or the YouTube channel, as I said, Padre Peregrino, which only has about a thousand subscribers right now. Now, most of you are probably watching these first ones on Census Fidelium with over 150,000 subscribers. Census Steve, as we like to call him, was kind enough to put me up, but if his viewers get bored with mental prayer and catechism six times a week, just tell Census Steve and he'll boot me with no hard feelings between the two of us. Got that, Steve? Both the YouTube channels, both Padre Peregrino and Census Fidelium, if Steve keeps me up, they're both going to have playlists. One playlist is going to be called VLX for this, the meditation. So VLX is one playlist on Padre Peregrino, and it's also a playlist on Census Fidelium. And then the other playlist is CPX, which is the Catechism. That's going to be found on the Padre Peregrino YouTube channel. And it's also going to be found on the Census Fidelium YouTube channel. Now, if you're just listening to the podcast, it's just going to be consecutive. It's just going to be every other day VLX, every other day CPX. Okay, we'll sign off here, but please be aware that all future ones will be much shorter after the first three VLXs. And the next one, VLX2, is the most important because I'm going to teach you the two ways that the saints meditated on the Bible. God bless you all.